Welcome to Any Music Podcast, episode 326, Metering. Any Music Podcast now has a Patreon at patreon.com slash indie underscore music cast, and we invite you to become a member for exclusive benefits. For next to nothing per month, you can get members-only podcast video, early access to upcoming episodes, merch, and more. This morning, Matt and I get together for coffee and talk about various types of audio metering and how we use them in our workflows. Enjoy the show. Doug. Hey, good morning. Hey, this is the first time I've seen you this morning. <laughs> okay, it's it's way back now. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Oh. Did you change something between I, I touched nothing? <laughs> I touched nothing. I didn't pull a Doug and change some routing. I didn't do anything. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> uh I'll leave it up to you. Want to go for it or? Or work on it some more and we can... um... Oh, let's go for it. I'll watch a video or something. The weird thing is that it sounds perfect to me. It it never changed on my end. Well, you know what's better than than talking to to Matt on Saturday mornings? It's it's talking to two Matts on Saturday mornings. (laughs) Damn right. (laughs) Hey, everybody. So we're... um, Yeah, I switched out. I I upgraded my interface. I now have have an audience... um, ID4 Mark II, and um, I love it. It's just more complicated than I thought it was going to be. It looks so sleek and simple, uh, but it has a software component and does all this routing and talk back and and cue mixing and all this other stuff. And uh, just kind of working out why it sounds, apparently it sounds doubled on Zoom or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's It's been cost for me to finish my coffee before. <laughs> I know I'm almost done with my tea, too. But thankfully, well, you can't hear my neighbor's lawnmower because he decided early in the morning. He's like, oh, I'm going to fire up my lawnmower at 8.30 in the morning on Saturday. Wake everybody up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hearing it. So hopefully. No, that's good. I'm glad. I get, I, I get cranky when people fire up their lawn equipment first thing in the morning on the weekend. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> Long, rough week. Can you just not? No, our city ordinances, uh, you can do anything you want after 730, which is, I think, a little. Oh, I think it's seven here. Early. So we get the leaf blowers and the lawn mowers and the the worst. Are, you know what the worst is? The worst is the 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 double combo of chainsaw and um um branch grinders you know those oh. the one, the trailers where they throw, throw the big branches in and, <laughs> all day long like, oh my god <laughs> the, the, yeah. that's the downside of living in the suburb a lot of upsides it's the downside that uh that usually uh happens more often like uh, immediately following large storms um mm, around yeah. here you don't really you don't really get a lot of large storms we just get a lot of you know homeowners who decide that they want their trees trimmed <laughs> for whatever reason you know what i think i'm gonna pay somebody to trim all my trees today yeah <laughs> that's trying to record something i heard i'm gonna i'm gonna make as much noise <laughs> as possible <laughs> oh anyway how are you doug Oh, I'm doing good. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on uh, your um, your award. Oh, you thank you for mastering um, our friend Allison's single that she won an award for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she won uh, best cover for her song uh, um, "All Along the Watchtower." Slash, it was a mashup with. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, carry on my wayward son uh, cover that she did in her unique style and uh, it won best cover in the new mexico music awards so yeah and it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. a great song yeah. go find that and check it out wherever you can yeah it's on uh, uh, allison reynolds music.com and she has her entire catalog there but yeah, that's uh, pr- kind of neat, you know? <laughs> yeah, very cool. Very Something cool. doesn't happen every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of fun because um, 
the work that I do is always sort of in the background. And, right. uh, you know, there's those memes about, you know, the uh, the artists and the producer, you know, and they're up front and there's the little guy shadowing down the back and the mix, <laughs> mix engineer, you know. And, right, right. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah, so it's nice um, um, to be able to participate in something that gets recognition like that. That's cool. Yeah, totally cool. <laughs> Unlike this podcast, which will never get recognized for anything, and it's not winning any awards. No, that's no, <laughs> okay. It's still fun. Yeah, uh, award for best. What do you think? I I, I hesitate to speculate. <laughs> best banter in a podcast. Best banter in a podcast. <laughs> Got it. Wow. If there was an award, I think we would get that. <laughs> like, Podcast is 90% banter and yeah. 10% actual information. Best ability to go down rabbit holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm liking my setup. I had I had to reconfigure everything. It looked good. I, I saw your I had, to, I had to switch my I switched my fan and my my lava lamp and my other I like your little mix cube. The cube has been sitting on my desk for two years and I've not used it. And now I can just hit alt speaker and listen to it. Yeah. It's it's a garbage sounding speaker, but that's the point. <laughs> it's the it's a Behringer copy of an Oratone, and they don't make Oratones anymore. It's called a Baritone. And um I thought Oratone was still around. Maybe they got resurrected. They went out of they stopped making those things for a while. But I get them confused with Aventone. So forget Oh forget. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get them confused as well. But anyway, it's like a single mono. Gosh, I want to say four inch speaker, five inch speaker. And um it's it's meant to be that kind of if it sounds good on this, it should sound good anywhere kind of speaker. Yeah. Yeah. And, do you do you think uh what what does that speaker represent? Uh, a a lo-fi um uh user device speaker or something like that? I think so. I think so. Um it's it's I actually, um, when I because I knew I couldn't use it all the time, I took I took the the spec sheet for it, and I made an EQ curve preset based on the EQ curve that was in the spec sheet, and I use that on my master bus. So I pop it on and off to listen to it. What it does is it rolls off the lows, and it rolls off the highs. It basically gives you just the mids. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever I like any generic small non-hi-fi speaker is going to give you and i think the idea is that the bulk of your song is represented in the mids anyway but you want to make sure that in those mids you can hear all of the important parts of the song and the song comes through and so i think that's what it really represents it's it's it's, it's more or less a bell curve um it doesn't yeah, but, sound good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, ha I, ha I haven't really felt the need, but I, I have had, uh, I continually think that maybe I, uh, the studio would benefit from a pair of the Aventone mix cubes, mm -hmm. um, just as a as a lo-fi reference um, to switch to, um, and it's it's a little out of scope for mastering, because um, right. uh, uh, I think those are a lot more beneficial during mixing. Um, yeah, yeah. And, I don't know what I don't know if it would help be helpful during mastering because you've already got the full song fully baked, basically. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, in the mixing stage, when you're like, okay, when you hear this on a small generic cruddy speaker, can I even hear that there's a bass? Yeah. And see, the way that I do this now is, uh, and using my mains, is that I actually am able to um, set up a filter for a frequency mm -hmm. range and just hear that. Um, oh yeah, yeah, you know, and so I kind of do this already um, by uh, by I, uh, by bandwidth isolation, um, okay. you know, and I can just like uh, grab a range that I'm interested in, you know, and then either expand or contract that range or move the range, um, mm -hmm. you know, up and down the uh, uh, the spectrum, and yeah. um, and just hear that area, which is basically the same thing that you'd be doing with uh adding uh a set of mix cubes or something like that you know if i wanted to just hear the mids you know and i could set that up to um to to roll off 
you know, uh, highs and lows at a certain frequency range. Right. And, and kind of get the same thing, you know, so. You I use Metric AB for that? Because Metric AB does that, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's such a great plugin. Yep. I really need to use it more in my workflow. It does so many things. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Like, hey, in this frequency band, how does it? Well, what I use it for is um, because it's it's an AB tool, right? You take your you take a, your mastered um, your you you know your commercial fully mastered reference mix, and you're like, okay, in this bandwidth range, in this frequency range, can I hear the bass as well as I can in the fully mastered commercial reference mix? That's what I use it. For. Yeah, yeah. So I use it for AB obviously i mean that's its main thing um i i use the um the uh um sort of i guess it's sort of a spectrum analysis um mm -hmm. to uh compare because you it, it allows you to see your changes against the original right um uh in real time and i can i can get an idea of what actually have i done um, you know, so my ears and, and what I think I've done, is that actually what I've done? And, uh, and, and have a look at it and just kind of a sanity check kind of thing. I don't use the, um, let me pull it up real quick. Uh, I don't use like the loudness tools there. Uh, oh, right. And, uh, but yeah, so I use the spectrum. Oh, I'm seeing my voice. Look at that. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, because I have this on my, uh, uh, I have a, 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 mon a master monitor FX. So yeah. I, I can throw um, uh, plugins on my master bus. Oh, you have a, a workaround for this too. Um, right. that, that allows me to um, uh, keep them off of the channel. And it's not actually even on the master bus. It's after the master bus. Um, and uh, it's on the monitoring channel. Um Right. And so this is where I put all my metering, which I guess that's kind of what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, and well, I told you how I, oh, yeah. Sorry. You go ahead. Uh, yeah. And so Spectrum, um, th there's a, a, a correlation. Um, and that kind of uh, lets me see like, uh, like face correlation of the, um, uh, of the signal. Right. I and like yeah, and the and the thing about phase, so you got to take phase with a grain of salt because you got to understand that sometimes mix engineers throw things out of phase on purpose because it sounds better. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it might be that they really like the sound of that tom that's out of phase, you know, because it's it's giving something you know to that drum kit. So just because something's out of phase doesn't mean it's bad. I want to say that, um, you know, cause we often say, man, you know, um, uh, phase cancellation, you know, you, you want to avoid that and fix it at all costs. Not necessarily the case. Um, a, a lot of times mix engineers use this as a tool, um, and will actually, um, you know, toggle phase, uh, purposefully to see which side they like better. And, True. uh, you know, True. so, um, so you got to understand that, but the correlation is cool because, and, and, and to understand the correlation that anything above zero is in phase and anything below zero on a correlation meter is out of phase. Okay. Yeah. And, and they always make the out of phase red and stuff like that. And again, it's not always bad. It's, uh, but I guess, you know, alert you that, uh, um, you know, this, this, these set of frequencies are out of phase in some way for some reason. But it's always good to look at um, phase. Uh, I should say that I always start my my mastering session, but with uh, um, with phase rotation, um, and I don't do this to actually correct phase. It doesn't do anything really to the audio signal. It's nothing audible that it does to the audio. But rotating the phase ensures that you have the maximum headroom available in the track that you can possibly have. Because if you have um, your waveform. Uh, significantly out of phase, out of balance on uh, on the zero line, um, then you're going to lose headroom uh, based on um, um, you know how much out of phase that is. So in some cases, it might be like 85% like out of phase. So like the whole signal, rather than being centered on the zero line, um, is shifted upward, and that uh, destroys your ability to uh, or, or minimizes your ability to uh, uh, have headroom in that area because you're already peaking. Um, and so when you rotate phase, you basically just take the whole thing and you move it down and, and 
get it centered, uh, you know, so that the amplitude is even up and down on that, uh, you know, on the AC signal. Um, yeah, and so then you have that much more headroom. If you have something, you know, 80% uh, out of uh, uh, phase rotated and you shift it down, you haven't changed anything about it at all other than how the waveform is aligned, uh, um, you know, on the, uh, uh, on the zero uh, hertz or volts or whatever. Um, okay, but how's that different than just turning it down a little bit? Oh, you're actually shifting the, you're not turning it down. The amplitude stays the same. Hmm. So you're actually taking the waveform and you're 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 offsetting it um, to uh, uh, better match uh, uh, the positive and negative uh, got it, got being it. equal on the zero line. And what so, tool do you use for that? Rx. Oh, okay. And um, and so I need to dive into more. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's a stereo image on. AB that I think is neat, <laughs> um, uh, but I actually uh, don't really use that too much uh, because uh, I use Insight too, and uh, that's where I take a look at at things like uh, uh, spectrum correlation, stereo image. Um, the uh, the dynamics in AB is really trying to give you a comparison and some idea of how your track uh, competes in the marketplace for loudness. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't care, uh, um, about that really. Um, you know, cause I, I just simply work the music to the, the maximum level that I can get without, uh, crushing it in most cases. Um, okay. and so whatever that, you know, that may be a, a track ends up being at 14 and a track may end up being at nine, it, you know, and I've, I've had other tracks, you know, that, uh, to serve that music I've had down and like, uh, you know, about 2.9 is the loudest master I've ever had, you know, <laughs> that's really loud. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't and, like to go past yeah, minus six. Yeah. And, and but the thing is, I, I was able to um, achieve the the headroom all the way through. Um, you That's know, I've cool. got about twenty four dB of headroom um, going outboard, and uh, um, uh, you know, so just managing that, and then managing the di digital clipping. And, you know, and that one's certified for Apple Digital Masters with no clipping. So, um, so in some cases, the music you can do it. You know, it just it really depends on the track and how you set things up. The phase sure. core, the, the the phase rotation helps a lot with that because uh, right off the bat you're giving yourself a few dB of uh, of headroom um, uh, just by uh, just by you know rotating the phase. So, um, yeah. so I like what you were saying about having all of your metering after the master. Um, the way I have learned to do it and the way I set up all of my mixes is I is I send all of my tracks to what I'm call a fake two bus, which is a which is a, just a, an aux bus before the master bus. And I have all of my effects on that bus. And on my master bus proper, I only have metering. So I have, you know, uh, you lean loudness meter, I have a multimeter, I have um, an EQ, which has the uh, I, my preset called bad speaker, which we were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, I have span on there, which I use less and less now that I use you lean loudness meter more. Um, I was going to add metric AB, but apparently I can't add any plugins while I'm recording. So I uh, was pop that open and look at it while we were talking. Uh, you can't do that. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been opening. Not, a, not, a, not, not when I could, not while I'm recording and I don't want to stop recording. No, I guess I can do that. I haven't uh, done that on the track, although I don't know if I can, um, but yeah, on the uh, monitoring effects bus, um, then I, I can, I can do whatever I want on there while yeah. it's recording. That makes sense. But so over an insight though, so this is where I, I probably use insight a lot more. So, and generally I use insight um, uh, uh, kind of in my, the meat of my mastering process. And then at the end of my mastering process, um, and then I use uh, metric AB kind of in the middle uh, mm -hmm. of it because uh, I go through, I, I don't even look at AB to initially. Um, and I don't even, uh, other than listening to the original track, uh, whatever number of times, um, I don't do any comparison to the original track uh, to uh, my work until I've gone through my initial set of passes to where, because 
I want to hear my, I want to go with my ear to begin with, and then uh, see then how that compares to the original once I get through that. That's what I like to do. Um, and it, that's just, that's not a law or anything. You can do it however you want. You know, I, I, I uh, that's how I like to do it because I feel I get my, I get a good separation from me and the original to create what I think sounds good, you right. know, and then I compare it to the original and see how I did and, and, um, um, and then uh, make some tweaks from there based on what I'm hearing. Cause sometimes what I thought, um, you know, honestly, I mean, sometimes, and it's, and it's usually like the snare drum, um, it, uh, um, I, I find after doing the AB comparison that I, I want to make some changes to the work that I did. So, mm. and, and when I do that, I usually go through my process and do everything. And then I walk away for a while right. and then I come back and I do my AB a, sweeps and, um, you know, with, you know, just 15, 20 minutes and, uh, take a break and come back with kind of fresh ears and then do the AB sweeps and see what I think, you know, and then work from there. Yeah, I inevitably I will, I like to work myself to a stopping point and then usually like come back the following day and get with fresh ears, fresh brain, fresh outlook and and, and get a full fresh take on what I did yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So initially though with uh with insight uh, uh I am setting my level I'm um uh I don't know yet what the loudness of the track is going to be. Mm. But I go, but I go ahead and, and um set it at its loudest level without clipping at that point, because that's kind of where I'm going to end up with, but, right. um, uh, but there's going to be changes. And so I've got to like make gain staging adjustments along the way, you know, so I might end up, uh, um, I might end up having to reduce the overall level of the track itself if it's too hot and, uh, and then bump it up. Uh, with a limiter on the end to begin with. So the, the limiter is the only thing that I actually have running um, when I start. And so I'll be monitoring the loudness meter there to get like an approximation of where I think this will be. And, um, and then, I, and then I basically work on that and the loudest loudness meter. I'm really paying attention to uh, integrated loudness and true peak um, are what I'm interested in. Same. Um, and uh, uh, the other stuff is okay, like momentary and short term. It's just kind of a, um, it depends. Uh, those are important for like uh, program material for broadcast or something like that. But generally in uh, music, the, um, uh, the true peak is going to tell you, um, it, you know, if you're having uh, like intersample clipping or something like that, and that right. you want to keep an eye on. Um, and then the integrated loudness. And that's, that's where I'm, kind of shooting for for the uh for the track itself um and you know not to be confused with shooting for the streaming media platform i'm not, i don't even care about that anymore no, um, that doesn't matter at all yeah, yeah. integrated loudness is where i'm always looking in my ulean meter yeah and i do keep an eye on the uh true peak but that gets i always have a, a clipper at the end to kind of bump things down and then i check it afterwards but it's the integrated loudness the luffs right there which yeah. I think it looks like it's a different color <laughs> to make it stand out on this meter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the integrated, I can, I can set up different colors and stuff like that and create uh, custom uh, thresholds that go red if you hit them and things like that. So, if, uh, you know, if I am uh, targeting a certain loudness, um, it will notify me if I'm at or above that loudness level. Um, next is like the spectrum uh, meter. And I generally uh, just keep an eye on it, but um, I focus in on that when I feel like there's an offending signal somewhere to help me try to find um, at least the range of what I'm hearing is um, mm -hmm. so, so that I can then kind of experiment uh, around that range in EQ on something that might be harshness or something, you know, along that line. So, and, and so I'll use a spectrum meter to help me with that. And I use the spectrum meter over in uh, probably metric AB a little bit more than I do in uh, Insight because the spectrum meter in Insight gives me both my changes and the original at the same time, and okay. I can and I can compare because if I didn't hear something in, in the original that I think I created it you know or something like that, then I can kind of get oh, a, get yeah, a visual yeah. of that. Uh, difference and where are the main differences in, in the work that I've done. Um, and I can also see like uh, right off the bat, like if something's way too heavy on the bottom end in, in subsonic frequencies, 
um, that, uh, uh, you know, I want to double check in that area. And so that helps me out a lot for that. Uh, that subsonic energy also in a spectrogram. Um, mm-hmm. um, I do use the spectrogram kind of just to get an overall uh, view of, of the energy of the, of the music and it, and it has a history so I can kind of see the dynamics of it as well. Um, but it really tells me a lot about the low end. That's usually where even here in me talking and watching this, the, um, the low end energy is, is always where the majority is. And I, you know, it's not that I have a deep voice. It's just that those are the frequencies that take the most energy to reproduce. And so I like to keep an eye on that and just see how, um, those are actually laying out to, um, uh, you know, to the entire track. And, uh, if I see any, like, uh, anything that, that comes up as a real weird kind of peak or valley that wouldn't be, it wouldn't be expected. It's not like a dynamic element that you expected to have there. What happened? Oh, right. Like but, it was in the mix somewhere and maybe they didn't hear it, uh, but it's affecting the, um, but it's affecting the limiter or. Yeah. And the, the cool thing on my spectrogram is that I can rotate it and look at it from different angles. Um, and, uh, um, and then, so if you have something, um, you, you can actually turn it on its side and around and so forth and look and look at the peaks and valleys in, uh, from different perspectives and actually uh, dial in to, uh, you know, I'm to 300 hertz, you know, is, is where I saw this and, and to get an idea where that happens in the song and really isolate something. So I do like that for there. Um, wouldn't it be cool to have that as a hologram to just be able to see it? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> um, general levels, uh, you know, is, uh, just like you have on your master bus, you know, yep. and, um, and then, uh, sound field stuff. And, uh, so like, uh, polar samples, uh, and, uh, polar levels, uh, give you a nice visualization of what your sound field and your stereo image looks like. Oh, right, right. What and uh, do, Audiometer. if I say this right, you know, uh, Lysigius, I think, is, oh. the, um, is okay. the meter that I use. And um, and that gives you, a, a, like right now, my sound field in mono is right up the middle. I mean, it is, you can look at it and go, that's mono, <laughs> you know, right. and uh, and it's right on zero. There's no positive or negative uh, phase at all, you know. So it's one mic, you know, you're not going to have, it's always going to be zero in mono, you know, so. Um, but when you get into a stereo channel, then, uh, I like this, uh, lascivious, uh, meter sound field meter, because it gives me a visual of the actual sound field and what the stereo image looks like. Um, how much. Did you hear that? I did. Oh, see, that's what I was talking about earlier. I was was trying to click on something to see if you, how do you pronounce that word? L I S S -S A J O U S. Yeah. I think it's lasciduous. I think. I, I thought I always thought it was a French word, lasciduous, but lasciduous. No, I've uh, never heard anybody say that, it out loud. Man, I'm going to say that to my wife. I bet. Um, but I got to tell you, you shouldn't <laughs> be able to hear when I play something on YouTube yeah. through Zoom. That I want to. I want to say thanks for playing YouTube while I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to look up how to say that. That's all. <laughs> So anyway, to wrap that, you know, so those, <laughs> the, those, the polar sample and, and polar levels and, and, uh, this is you, uh, allow you to, uh, to, to really visualize your, uh, your stereo image and then to keep an eye on your face. And, and that's why I like the this is you, um, uh, meter, because it, it, it gives me a good indication of, of if phase is, is, uh, positive or negative and, uh, you know, in antiphase, uh, uh, then if there's something there that might need to be corrected or, or discussed or, or it sounds good, yeah. uh, even though there's antiphase there, no biggie. So, but that's kind of my take on meters. Yeah, I have, I have that built into, I want to say I have that built into ozone, the ability to look at that, that phase correlation as well. And if you put something in mono, it's basically like a straight line instead of a I think you have it in what's the what's the meter that you use? I forget. I used to use it. Um, uh, Not what? Not Yulian. Yeah. You don't use that anymore. I don't use it anymore. Uh, I, I well, I use Insight. Oh, okay. But uh, I had um, Insight for a while. I liked it, but I decided I didn't want to pay for it. Yeah. Well, Yulian is um, Yulian. Yul- I always called it Yulian. Um, Eileen, you know, and uh, so too. Now I'm to wonder. Now I'm questioning how to pronounce everything. Also. <laughs> so, but uh, um, 
you, Leon. I, I, th- I thought I thought that had uh, sound field meters in it. It might. I just realized that it has all these little buttons you can click to show different, to turn on and off different things that I didn't really know about. One of them is a dialogue detector. It'll put a purple bar if it, if you if it detects somebody talking. Yeah. Which I didn't know it did that. I don't know why I would want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, yeah. I've got dialogue, and uh, it's got an intelligible, intelligible. Oh God, <laughs> intelligibility uh, uh, meter. So for spoken word. Um, so for me, it would be going off the chart. Say, for me, it's always <laughs> mush mouth and mumbling. But for VO work, that might be uh, uh, something that's useful. But I don't, yeah, for sure. That's actually disabled in my view. So, but yeah, meters are fun. Now, um, what's the? Um, I have another one that I haven't used in a long time that I really like, and there's a free version of it, and it's really a beautiful metering setup. Um, well, there's a free version of Yulian or Yulian. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Are you thinking of Blue Cat? You're not thinking of Blue Cat. No, not Blue Cat. It's it's actually quite an expensive metering setup if you buy the pro version. It's in like in the three hundred dollar range, I think. Oh, ouch. Uh, um, but the the free version is really nice and gives you some some decent uh, free tools to work with. And it, Waves has a nice one now that's basically meant for broadcast. I mean, it has like just a ton of things to look at. And I haven't bought it because I use this one and it does most of what I want to do anyway. Um, oh, although I did buy the pro version of Yulene. Yeah, before. I actually have it on here. Uh, um, and I haven't used it in a while, but I do have it on my uh, monitor effects bus. And it's uh, the Flux. Um, so, uh, uh, so it's a standalone application and then it has a, um, a stereo tool, uh, plugin that allows you to link your DAW to the running application. Mm. And, uh, which is <clears throat> one of the reasons I don't use it. Cause it's a pain in the butt sometimes to actually get that to connect, you know, cause it doesn't actually run as a plugin in your DAW. It has a plugin connector that connects oh. it. If you, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. but when it does work, it's really nice. Um, <laughs> And I think, you know, I originally got that as part of uh, a focus right thing way back. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I've always enjoyed it. And that was actually, um, that was, I had that metering before uh, uh, Yulene. And I'm not, I, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going Yulene. No. Um, and um, <laughs> I don't think it's Yulene. But I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, you know, it's you and it's lean, you know. And uh, <laughs> the um, that was the waves WM WLM that I was thinking of. I think it's waves loudness meter, but it has more than loudness. It's got all kinds of stuff. I just think it's, I just think that all that stuff is already in Yulian. Yulian. Yeah. Now I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's annoying. I have so many meters. So that's yeah. all I use though. So, I mean, so I just rattled off a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but that's basically two plugins, um, that I use for metering. And I also, I have metering, um, I have VU metering. So I, those are my digital meters that I just talked about. And then I, I have analog metering as well. So, um, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. uh, VU meters behind me and I talked about those before, but I use those to take a look at what's going on. These are mm-hmm. cool because they represent kind of more what you hear versus right. digital metering does. And, um, uh, because of the uh, the response time is you know three thousand milliseconds you know for uh, for a needle to 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 hit versus instantaneously in a digital meter you know so uh, you know because of that it uh, it it does represent more what how we hear things um, and then yeah, I, can, I use I, a digital I use digital VU meters and that's how I do all of my initial gain staging I have a a digital VU meter trim plugin at the top of every single one of my tracks. And before I even listen to anything, I gain stage them up using the the digital view meter. I just, you know, I just, it just. Yeah. And I, I like the like looks of them too. It's, it's, it's yeah. aesthetically pleasing to me. It's aesthetically you know? pleasing. I'm an analog kind of guy in a digital world. Yes. But I just like, I do like that it more represents how we hear things and it's not, it doesn't give you the, uh, this kind of idea that you have to be all about the numbers. Yeah which in the digital world, you can always be like, oh, it has to hit this number and it has to hit this number. Well, it's more like, you know, I just try to hit it between the threes. Is it touching zero? 
bounce, bounce, bounce. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's when, when you said you were an analog guy in a digital world, I, I had uh, um, Material Girl song. Can't... <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> living in a digital world. Uh, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to finish that one. <laughs> I've, I've also on, on my uh, Hilo, I've, I use um, the uh, the monitor out view meters on those, which are an analog representation. So they actually have a uh, um, kind of like an, uh, an offset built into them so that they represent. I can actually use these and match up and and uh, calibrate my analog view meters with mm -hmm. um, because these have the uh, the same delays built into them on that. Okay. So, so it's cool because they, they kind of represent that. And uh, and then I also have um, metering, um, which is connected to my Hilo for the individual channels, which actually is more of a spectrum type of meter that I run on my iPad during my sessions. So okay. I, can, I can actually see my uh, spectrum meter uh, um, of what's going on through the ADDA um, uh, on the iPad. So that's kind of... Yeah, I notice you don't have your big TV monitor up right now. No, it's off. I'm uh, no reason for it to be on, <laughs> other than promotion. <laughs> if I had <laughs> right, <laughs> you should do that. Just put your put your logo up there. When, yeah, when... it normally is because that's my wallpaper. So, uh, okay. Well, I think we're about out of time. We are about out of time. I hope yeah. you, uh, you yeah. all enjoyed our discourse <laughs> on metering and. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, leave any questions or comments and stuff about this, because uh, we do love to talk about it. Can't you tell? Yes, indeed. <laughs> we can talk about it all day, <laughs> but let's not. <laughs> all right, Doug, thank you. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, too. Um, and have a great day. And Thanks for I too. hope a lawnmower man settles down. <laughs> hope he wraps up soon. I didn't really catch it in my uh, monitoring. <clears throat> Of, uh, That's good, actually, so I don't, huh? I don't know that it's there. So, might be in your audio though. But well, it's in my. I can I mean I can hear it, but I think that my my mic is so directional and my signal to noise ratio is pretty good. So should be able to sample that and remove it from your audio. So I can do that. Yep. <laughs> All right, everybody. Peace. All right. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>